whether you're touring Europe's rural roadways or holding on for dear life on US freeways, Pegasi has built the bike for you. Same company as this, different division. The difference between sports car and sports bike means it's not going to impress as many women in the club. Instead, you'll receive approving looks and semi furled brows from other middle-aged men in front of your local bean machine. That's because the FCR 1000 has carved out an admirable following of like-minded individuals, who praise the boxer bike for its reliability and simplicity. Out of the box, the FCR series of motorcycles were some of the most durable cruising machines Europe had on offer, so long as you treated them right. In the sea of alluring sub and countercultures the motorcycle sprouted from, the FCR sits in the middle almost as comfortably as its rider. You won't find this European sports bike riding in the midst of an American chopper pack, nor will you find it head-to-head -head with Japanese crotch rocket brigades under the cover of night. The FCR 1000 has custom cultures of its own, primarily cafe racers and scramblers. The FCR's race bike-inspired fairing houses quite a large headlight, a distinct feature of Pegasi's former premier sports bike. Saddlebags were optional for convenience and additional cool factor. Taking a peek below the signature Nosh fuel tank reveals a flat twin airhead engine with a chain to the rear tire. The FCR gets a decent amount of horsepower out of the boxer arrangement, but it's sorely lacking in top speed given its age. The airhead engine was so popular that Pegasi's attempt to stop the line in favor of water-cooled models was walked back after fierce opposition from dealerships and collectors alike. And just like car enthusiasts, many motorcyclists share a burning desire to void warranties and make vehicles work less for reasons of looks and speed. Not being assaulted by constant flings of mud, stone, and asphalt is cool, but what if it didn't have fenders? Sure, the exhaust system might have been factory tuned to deal with back pressure and power, but this one looks like it's made of rags and surgical tubing. Plus, it idles funny. And therein lies the fun. Rebuilding one's bike offers a technical creativity that's way less accessible in cars. Anyone can slap a few aftermarket parts in the family's Sultan, but very few will chop down and rework a Weevil until it's a completely different vehicle. Motorcycles allow for ease of access to each component to fulfill any tinkerer's deepest desires. All of this on a much smaller scale, so it doesn't require confronting a loan shark just to finish the build. With any piece of machine history, it's always a point of contention amongst enthusiasts when somebody irreversibly alters a beloved machine. For example, you might have one of the last great American land yachts in your driveway, but after somebody steals it for a reality TV show and returns it with pinstripes, hydraulics, and a sound system to compete with the Maze Bank Arena loudspeakers, you've lost something. A piece of history is now forever a one-off personal art project that no longer reflects the era it was made in, nor the purpose it was built for. It can be argued that one's identity can be lost in the boundless pursuit of expression and individualism. However, it can also be argued that the mod culture is one of the foundational pillars which makes bikes and cars so great in the first place. It's kind of a muddy toss-up. The SCR 1000 is a dish of many unique possibilities, and its flavor should always be left to its chef.